Hello, everybody. My name is Jesse, and I am your virtual adventure guide here with Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants in our first week of Epic Broadcast. For those who have joined us before, welcome back. For those who are coming in for the very first time, of which we have a lot of new faces today, welcome in. Last year, we did over 500 broadcasts celebrating scientists, explorers, conservationists around the globe with classes like you through like a gazillion free live interactive broadcast. And so welcome to our platform. We are all about providing the coolest, most engaging, exciting, and informative sessions for kids like you. Now, this first week has been epic and amazing. We have done the James Webb Space Telescope. We've talked about marine plastics. Yesterday, we rode across the Pacific Ocean with Erdin Eruch, one of the world's leading explorers. And on Wednesday, we did some more amazing stuff as well. So it's just been, a, it's so packed that I've even forgotten what we did on Wednesday. That's how busy we've been. It's been a good time. Today, we are diving in with a really exciting program. But before we do that, a quick housekeeping note. For those who are familiar with us, we like to do who quizzes in between the talk and the Q&A. And so I will bring up this pin again, but if you want to open up a tab on your computer, play around with our Kahoot quiz, four questions, about two minutes in the middle of the program, feel free to bring that up now, and I will share that with our YouTube friends as well in a second. Now, today we are diving into one of my very favorite topics. When I was a boy, most kids like birds, they like mammals, fluffy things, cute things, big eyes, not me. I liked big predators. I liked crocodiles and lions and tigers and bears, oh my. And my favorite thing in the world was sharks because sharks are extraordinary creatures that have been around for so, so long, dominate the oceans of this planet, and are just so amazing and cool. And so today, we have the incredible team from OceanWise. Tamara is our educator guide today, and she's going to walk us through the amazing world of sharks, why they are ocean superheroes. We're going to learn a lot about them. We're going to have a lot of fun. And I don't want to steal her thunder, so I'm going to turn it over to you, Tamara, to blow our minds with the world of sharks. Thanks so much. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm so glad to see that there's at least one other big shark fan in our group and I'm sure there's a whole bunch of other ones. Sharks are some of my favorite animals in our ocean. I'm coming at you from OceanWise and at OceanWise, our mission, our goal is for you to know what you can do to help our oceans wherever you are. So I'm coming to speak to you from the unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh people. And that's important because people have been taking care of this land since time immemorial. So I want to follow that tradition and take care of my land. If you want to shout out in the chat what territory you are visiting us from, I'd love to hear that as well. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, start sharing my screen here. So at OceanWise, we have a whole bunch of different ways we take care of our oceans. We have researchers looking at sea forestation, whales, plastics, fisheries, and seafood. And at the middle of it all, it's you. Because you're the ones that can make a difference for our oceans in the future. So I want to introduce you to JAWS. What do you think? From a show of thumbs, yes or no, are sharks dangerous? We got a lot of, we got, we got a, a mix actually, one of the bigger mixes we've ever had with this question. We got quite a few up, we got quite a few down. On YouTube, you guys can feel free to chime in anytime in the chat as well, but I think it's a good, a good mix, Mara. Cool. So today we're going to explore why sharks are such good predators and predators can be dangerous animals. We're also going to explore why they're important in our ocean and actions we can take to help sharks. So. Sharks, we see a lot of media and movies that make them out to be very, very dangerous to people. But on average, how many people do you think are killed by sharks every year? You can type in the chat, throw it anywhere you want, show us a letter A, B, C, or D with your hands. What do you think? How many people are killed by sharks every year? Mm, dun, 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 dun. How about Monte Video Middle School? I'll bring you guys in. Everyone else can type in the chat too. What do we think? They're on the ball today. <laughs> Ten people per year killed by sharks. So they aren't an animal you might want to go pet. They're dangerous sort of in the same way bears are. Uh, but how many sharks do you think get killed by people every year? The same number? More? A little bit more? A million? What are your
your guesses. Miss Brandon's class, what do you guys think? I know you're pouring in. Hey, yeah. D, C, and D. Okay, so between 100,000 and 100 million. Wow. It's actually a million sharks. So if we're looking at who's more dangerous, I think that's us. Now, sharks, they have a lot of really cool adaptations on their bodies that allow them to be top predators. Which one would you guys like to explore? Do Ooh. we want to explore what's on their nose, what's in their mouth, or what their bodies are made out of? I think we should head to Minnetonka in Manitoba, our room 12 crew. What do you guys think? A, B, or C? C, A, C, A, A, C, A, 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 you know what? I'm so glad we went here. Take a close look at that nose. Do you see all those little holes there? Now, sharks, they're a little bit different from us. They have eyes. They have ears. And on their nose, they have these little things. I'm going to let our friend Rob tell us. Could you imagine if you could sense electricity? So these sharks, they have all these little holes filled with gel and they can feel electricity. Now that's important because when our heart beats, that's a little electrical impulse. So sharks can actually feel when a fish's heart is beating funny. If the fish's heart is beating funny, that means it's probably not a very healthy fish. And that means it's an easy fish for the shark to catch. So this shark is scanning the ground, feeling for the heartbeats of fish that might be hiding in that sand. And that's another reason why sometimes you see videos of divers with sharks and they rub the shark's nose and flip it over. That's why that happens. By touching all of those sensory organs, it's too much for the shark and they freeze. So that's one of my favorite adaptations. And they can feel it all down their lateral line, straight to their tail. What do we want to see next? Ooh, we Mr. looked at the senses. We've got teeth or what their body are made out of. Miss De Silva, your Brantford crew, what do we want to do? B or C? <laughs> C? C, I heard. B I think we're thinking uh, B, guys. B, mainly. Okay. Teeth Let's go teeth. there. We're going to look at the shark's teeth. And in this, it kind of looks like one tooth is right in front of the other. But the cool thing about shark's teeth is they, they actually work a little bit like a conveyor belt. They roll along their jaw. They have up to eight layers of teeth all stacked on top of each other. So when one falls out, the second one is almost there already, ready to go. And different sharks will have different shaped teeth. This is my favorite shark. It's called the cookie cutter shark. We only just found out about it. People kept finding these weird circle scars on whales. And they're like, what's doing that? Then we found the shark with that circular mouth, they just spin their bodies and cut a cookie of blubber out of a whale. And then the whale keeps swimming. The shark goes away with their little cookie of blubber. But not all of our sharks have teeth. Our whale sharks are actually filter feeders. So right beside their gills, they have these things called gill rakers that will help catch. Uh, let's have a boat. Are they eating, is this whale eating, or whale shark, sorry, eating those fish or something else? Mr. Lee's class, what do we think? Is our whale shark friend eating the fish or not? <laughs> Absolutely not. This whale shark, those fish, they're eating the same thing. See all these white fuzzy bits in the water at the very end of the video? Those white fuzzy bits are 
plankton. And that's what these animals are eating. So our whale shark is this huge 20 meter shark at the back. Our biggest shark in the ocean doesn't have teeth. We think the megalodon was a little bit smaller or just a little bit, sorry, a little bit bigger than our whale sharks. Well, that leaves us with one more adaptation I want us to explore. Shall we look at the shape and what their bodies are made out of? I, I think we should. I'm excited. This is a shark skeleton. I know it looks a little different from ours, but that's because sharks, no bones. I want everyone to take their fingers and fold their ears. Unfold your ears. If you don't want to fold your ears. You can squish your nose. That's cartilage. You also have it between all of your bones so that when you straighten and bend your arm, it feels good. These sharks, their whole skeleton is soft. Everybody reach up tall and stretch to the side. Oh, stretch to the other side. Imagine how far you could stretch from side to side if you didn't have hard bones. How quickly could you oh, turn around if you didn't have hard bones? I'm going to show you a video. It's a little bit scary. A shark is going to eat a seal. If you don't want to see it, you can just close your eyes. It'll be less than 10 seconds. Are you ready? Five, four, three, two, one, slightly scary video. Coolest thing in nature, all of it. I love the way that these sharks hunt. I think this is the coolest thing. And having that cartilaginous body means that the shark can leap out of the water because the cartilage is actually lighter than bones. So it makes it easier for the shark to go fast along with a few other things. So our sharks are these amazing top predators and their job is to keep these coral reefs healthy. Apex predators have an important role in the ecosystem. In their ecosystem, they keep the balance. Does anybody see in this video, do you think the sharks are eating these small fish in the foreground or the bigger fish in the background? What do we think? Mm. What are your guesses? Miss Alfonso's class, if you guys want to unmute your mic, big fish or small fish, what are they eating? Big fish! They're eating the bigger fish. What are the smaller fish eating? Mm. Mane Video, what do we think? Smaller fish, what are they eating? Coral. Um, smaller fish. Algae. Smaller fish. Algae. Smaller fish. Algae. I like that the, there's always a bigger fish than algae. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So our sharks eat fish that are also predators that are eating these small fish like parrotfish and damselfish. And those damselfish eat the algae on the reef. The algae is important to feed them. They're important to feed the fish and the fish feed the shark. We're going to hear from Rob again. Sharks are themselves species, meaning they have a very important role in the environment. They really hold equilibrium. So, equilibrium is a fancy word for balance. If we take our sharks out of this ecosystem, we'd have more of those big predator fish. And those big predator fish, they'd eat all the algae eaters. And then we'd have so much algae that the coral, the habitat, wouldn't be able to live either because the coral needs to access the sunlight. So our sharks keep those fish in balance so that our algae eaters
can keep those beautiful coral reefs nice and healthy. So a healthy reef is a reef with sharks on it that our divers can come and take pictures of. Now, I've got a bit of shark trivia, but we also have our Kahoot. So we could move straight to the Kahoot. We could, if you'd like. And then you know what? If there are questions that I don't hit in the Kahoot, we can come back to Shark Trivia and have extra like bonus questions. How about that? I like that. I think that is a great plan. Perfect. Well, in that case, uh, first, I want to say thank you so, so much for giving us this deep dive into sharks, highlighting their amazing features, some of those cool facts. Uh, like, they're just the coolest animals of all time. I love them. And the fact they're that you have a, a breaching video. So I must admit, when I was about the age of some of the older kids in the classes today, I saw Planet Earth. And Planet Earth has this incredible three-minute great white shark breaching scene. And so I put that in the chat, private chat, and YouTube if you guys want to find out any more, because it's my favorite piece of natural history documentation ever. So do check that out. But let's dive in with our Kahoot folks. So the game bit is up on the screen. For those who don't know, the faster you answer, the more points you get with a Kahoot. Now you don't win anything, but you do win Tamarinai's everlasting respect. So we will, yes, that's that's the thing you get from this. And I, a small note, because it obviously gives us these animal names. If we get a shark winner, I'd be especially happy. It has happened in the past before. So I'm going to go ahead and start this. And Tamara, you can give us hints when there's like a few seconds to go in all of these questions, okay? Let's dive in our Sharks Ocean Superheroes. I love this part. This is so fun. And then we're going to dive in with questions. More questions for Tamara or questions from you guys. How many kinds of shark are there in the oceans? 25? Are there 100 kinds of shark? Are there a little over 500? Or are there 10,000 kinds of shark? There's just like a shark everywhere, all the kinds of shark. Cookie cutter sharks are a kind of shark. We learned about them today. Whale sharks. We've seen some great whites today. What do we think? By the way, cookie of blubber is the more disturbing phrase that I've heard in a long time. So thank you for that. A lot of you thought 10,000. Uh, so no, quite a bit fewer than that, but good guess. I typically, I like to pick the highest answer sometimes, but about a little over 500 species of shark. Good guess, guys. Radiant goat is in our lead. That's not a shark name, but kudos to you, Radiant goat. Okay, sharks have been around for how long? We didn't talk about this in the program. So 500,000 years, twice as long as mankind's been around. 66 million years when the dinosaurs died out, the sharks sort of took over from there. 130, as old as flowers, or over 400 million years, which is before anything with a backbone walked on land. So before all the amphibians, reptiles, birds, mammals, what do we think? Very even split. No one really had a thought with this one, but 400 million years. They are way older than dinosaurs, which is crazy. It's it's crazy. I love it. Okay. Uh, cr oh, creative duck has taken our lead. At least we're aquatic now. Okay. True or false? Now, you guys should get this one because we did this one. Sharks kill thousands of swimmers every year. Uh, you're Basically, you're, it's a 50-50 chance. You jump in the water, you're either eaten by a shark or you have a nice swim. What do we think? Come here, do you want to help us out? I think you know that. I go swimming a lot, and I've oh, never man. been eaten by a shark. That is true. Uh, we, I hope not. That's, How I'm many of you have swam in an ocean? <laughs> so most of you got this correct false. So, yeah, I think a couple of years back, it was six in the year were killed by sharks. About 25 people were killed by vending machines, and about 50 were killed by coconuts. So they stood under a tree, and a coconut bopped them on the head, and that took out 10 times more people than sharks. So that's just a... Uh, uh, something to think about. Radiant Goat takes our lead back again. It's a neck and neck battle. I'm very excited. A pitch challenge. Now this is a multi-select, so there's more than one answer here. How can you help sharks? Sharks are under threat. There's a lot of things that we're doing to sharks that are, are giving them challenges. So is it choose sustainable seafood, visit them, maybe some ecotourism, walk to school, that seems odd, pack a litterless lunch. What do we think? There's only four seconds to go. Only half of you have answered so far. Get those answers in. The answer is all of it. Anyone who picked all four, way to go. Sustainable seafood. I know we didn't talk about this during our program, but OceanWise, the American organization, is like the world leader in sustainable seafood. If you choose fish that are harvested sustainably from the oceans, it goes a really long way to helping protect sharks and all the other amazing creatures that fill the oceans. Ecotourism, visiting any creature will help protect it because then people recognize that they're valuable and they're worth something alive. Now we recognize that sharks are worth something whether people visit them or not, but that helps 
drive that point home. Walk to school, you are preventing greenhouse gas emissions from getting into the atmosphere, you are helping climate change, that helps every species on this planet. Radical change in the oceans is affecting everything. And finally, packing the litterless lunch, if you don't have any litter, it doesn't end up in the ocean, you help protect shark and all sorts of other marine creatures. So let's see our winner of our Kahoot, who can identify themselves in the chat. And then if there are some additional questions we didn't get to, kinds of questions, Tamara, we can do a few more questions and then dive in with a Q&A with you. So Snowy Gecko is second. Who won? The goat or the duck? Radiant goat for the win. Way to go, guys. Okay. Nice lead done. <laughs> I love it. Do you have more questions for us that we want to I in? absolutely have some more questions for you. And just give me half a second to pull my screen back on share. And shark trivia. Perfect. So I want to know which shark is considered the largest fish in the ocean. So we said sharks have cartilaginous bodies. They're in a family of fish called cartilaginous fish. And that means sharks are actually a type of fish. So what do you think? A, B, C, D. Okay, we've got one D that came in on our chat. So teachers, if you guys want to type into the StreamYard chat or YouTube chat, we'll see if we get some more answers. D, everyone's saying D. They, it's like they saw Absolutely. that slide. <laughs> Good, you were paying attention. Our whale sharks are the largest sharks in our ocean. And they have that really cool filter feeding adaptation. And our sharks are super diverse. They have a lot of different cool adaptations, but can they walk on land? Can some yeah. sharks walk on land? What do you think? True Crazy. or false? There's no way. I mean, not even this epaulette shark that is in this picture right now at all. There's no way. Uh, everyone's saying A. You know what? Everyone thinks sharks can walk on land. I don't know. The Let's sharks see. that can walk on land are a family called epaulette sharks and the coral cat sharks. And they are actually seen often crawling around in the shallow waters. And they dig their heads in these little holes to root out the small fish that will live there. So some of our sharks can actually walk. And <laughs> sharks, do they lay eggs? Absolutely. They have a fancy name, a mermaid's purse. And these are actually mermaids' purses held up to a light. So you can see the shark developing inside the egg, that big circle. That's kind of like the yellow part of the eggs that you eat. It's the nutrients for the shark to grow into what we would recognize as a shark. And you I'll can see the little I'll shark there. follow up for you, because I know we've got some audience near the Vancouver Aquarium. Is this from the Vancouver Aquarium? Is this picture taken there? This image was taken at the Vancouver Aquarium. Absolutely. So on occasion, when their epaulette sharks lay their eggs, they will put them on display like this so you can see what's going on. And they even managed to cut a little window in so it's see-through. And you can watch. They've done it more with rays and skates than with sharks. But you can watch their embryos develop into little Amazing. animals that you might recognize. I used to work at an aquarium in Toronto, and that was my favorite part of the entire aquarium was the egg sacs with the babies inside. It's like mind blowing. Everyone should go seek that out if you can. Okay. Yeah. If there's an aquarium near you, I highly recommend visiting because there's so much to learn just from watching these animals. Uh, what do you think? The largest organ in the body of a shark? A, B, C, or D? We got some A. Okay. We think liver so far. D, kidney. Uh, a, so A, livers are favorite so far. Way to go on the chat. Liver is the right know. answer. You are shark experts. A shark's liver actually helps the shark control its buoyancy. That means whether it floats or sinks. Something with positive buoyancy floats. Something with negative buoyancy sinks. What do you think? How many senses? Hmm. I have five senses. Sometimes when I uh, have a pluggy nose, I only have four. What do we think? Five, six, seven, or ten? Okay, so C, we got an A, A, B, oh, C, seven senses. Seven senses. So sharks will are just so perfectly adapted for their environment. Being able to feel the heartbeats along their lateral line, it is so, so 
cool. Hmm? My name is Thomas Lesbian. I studied biology at university. I'm now part of two organizations studying sharks. And I have the privilege to study sharks around the world with the best scientists. One of the main threats that sharks have today is, well, there's three of them. There's overfishing, there's illegal fishing, and there's bycatch. Bycatch is when people will try to catch a certain fish, but they drag the entire bottom or a big area of the ocean and they catch all these sharks, even though they don't want to catch them. But fortunately, the sharks get caught in this. So, Fishing is one of the big dangers for these animals. And I know Jesse touched on that in our Kahoot quiz. And that's why sustainable seafood is such an important thing to us at OceanWise. All sorts of animals, not just sharks, can be part of our bycatch. And so by choosing sustainable seafood, we make a really, really big difference for our oceans. So we already brainstormed some of the things we can do to help our sharks. And this is just so you know what the OceanWise logo known looks like. So you can make some good OceanWise sustainable decisions around the food that you eat for our oceans. But with that, I wanna say thank you so much for all of your attention, your quick answers in our Kahoot, your great things. But I bet there's things that you still wonder about sharks. So I'd like to answer as many of your questions as we possibly can in the time that we have left. Uh, well, we've got tons of time left and I want you to know that OceanWise historically has been the most questions we can get in any Q&A of all time. So you have a lot to live up to in your first program with us. I'm very excited. Um, sharks, what a fantastic program. Thank you so much for diving in with that. If you want to come out of screen share to see us have a bit of a conversation, great. I know we've got Mr. Shaddix's class. We've got Ms. Dester's class. Geez, all sorts of people on YouTube today, Mr. Bresden, Mr. Rutledge, our, our folks in Alaska, just all over the continent, so welcome in to all of you. And we are going to dive in with our first group at Montevideo Middle School. So come on in, guys, and take us away. Oh, and the button wants to work for me. There we go. Hi. Tell me your name. <laughs> tell me question. Hi, my name is Gavin Laro, and my question is, how fast do sharks swim? Yes. Oh, Gavin, what a good question. So it depends on the species of shark. Our fastest shark is the mako shark and they go over 20 kilometers an hour. So that's about the speed that you're allowed to drive through a school zone. That is, it's crazy. It's like, it's so fast. I love it. I love yeah. mako sharks too. They're such a beautiful shark. If anyone has never seen a mako shark, you should check them out immediately. All right. Yeah, so mako sharks live in the open ocean. So they need those bursts of speed. When they see something, they need to eat it. Uh, Ms. De Silva's class, I know you got a group in Brantford virtually, so unmute your mic and you can share a question on behalf of your class with okay. us. Hi. Okay. My name is Jenna and my question is, do you know how many species of sharks there are? That is a big question. Remember how we looked at that cookie cutter shark? That was only described scientifically in the last 10 years. So there's still new sharks out there to discover, but there are over 500 species that we have well documented. Yeah. But I love this and I love that answer because almost every time we explore the oceans, especially the deep oceans, we find new things. And that's one of the coolest things about being a biologist with the deep ocean is that you're always making discoveries. We had a person on just late last year in June or this year in June, uh, and she came on and she's discovered so many new species. She'd forgotten how many. Like we asked her, how many species have you discovered? And she's like, oh, uh, 10, 12, I, I don't know. Because every time you go down, there's a new shark or there's a new octopus or something. But over 500, a little over 500, 520, 540 is the thing that I found before the broadcast. Great question, guys. All right, uh, Miss Brandon's class, come on in. So nice to have you guys here in Lawson, Missouri. And take us away. Hi, my name is Bentley Taylor. And do sharks kill each other? Ooh. Mm. What a good question. Do sharks kill each other? So sharks don't typically predate on each other. That means they don't go like, oh, I'm a shark. I want to eat this shark that's the same species as me or even a different species as me. But 
occasionally it happens. So maybe there's a shark that has a big injury. The sh other sharks may eat that shark. Fantastic question. And by the way, that name is awesome. You could have like a, that's a total movie star name. I just, I love it. Um, all right, Mr. Lee's class in North Hollywood, California. Again, we have got these great locations today, Tamara, where we all wish we could be, where it's sunnier and starting to fall setting in here in Canada. It's kind of disappointing. Uh, but Mr. Lee's class, come on in third graders. Hi. Oh, um, nice shirt. What a great shirt you have. I love it. Yeah. Thank you. Um, <laughs> What shark, what are sharks predators? Ooh, what eat sharks? Oh, what a great question. What are sharks predators? Sharks are what we call apex predators. That means that if you thought of the food web as a big triangle with the animals below it, sharks are at the top. The only thing that's really dangerous to the sharks, that's us. We're a shark's biggest risk in the ocean. Yeah. It's, I mean, you, you highlighted, again, a hundred million sharks that we take out every year. And before us, you know, again, sometimes sharks should eat each other. Sometimes a shark might get in the way of a whale tail, but like until we came around, they really had no predators. And so it's really changed the balance of the ocean uh, and sort of uh, thrown off that equilibrium that we talked about earlier in the broadcast. Great question. All right, two more from our live groups, then we'll go to YouTube for a bit and then come back for another round. We're whipping through these. Our Room 12 crew in Tonga. Hi, guys. Come on in. Hi. Great hey. Come closer. Okay. You can say your name if you want. Like, has a shark ever met, like, uh, the great blue shark, like, the great blue whale? Has a shark ever, like, attacked or met, like, run into or, or eaten? Like, met... Come into oh. contact? Yeah, coming yeah. into contact. Cool. With the blue whale. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so sharks and blue whales inhabit the same ocean and they interact together. So the blue whale is the biggest thing we think that has ever lived on this planet. It's 30 meters long. So to picture that, three school buses. Have they interacted with sharks? Absolutely. Remember when we talked about the cookie cutter shark? Yep. <laughs> that whale blubber cookie. So imagine a little cookie cutter. That yep. tiny shark is the one that <laughs> is actually biting these big blue whales. We don't even know if the blue whale notices. Right. Because they're so big. They're so big. I think they might because I notice when a mosquito bites me, even though that mosquito bite is small. We do know for what it's worth, just in case your question was going in this vein, like things like great white sharks would have nothing to do with a blue whale. They're way too small comparatively that they never attack. The one thing that does hunt blue whales is orcas. So another kind of whale has been documented hunting blue whales are the biggest predator in the ocean. And I don't know if we've ever had a, a fossil confirm this, but Megalodon, which we talked about briefly, said the largest shark ever to exist with teeth that are this big, we know that they did hunt whales. So they may well have hunted blue whales. They were around and they coincided in terms of when they existed on Earth, which is pretty cool to think about. But in the meantime, cookie cutter is probably the, the shark that would brave going up to a blue whale the most. Great question, guys. All right, Miss Alfondo's class, grade ones, uh, Royal Palm Beach, come on in, unmute your mic, and you are good to go. Hey. Hello, Hello my name is Sarah uh, from Angel Dog Elementary School. My question is, how old can a shark live? Yeah, great question. Awesome. How old can a shark live? Now, again, that depends on the type of shark that we're talking about. But usually they have a lifespan that's around the same as a dog or some species can live as long as 70 years. But the oldest, 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 oldest shark is the basking shark and the Greenland shark. Those two sharks, they can get to be almost 200 years old. It's fantastic. And the reason we know that is actually because of people's fishing. There's a special type of spear people used to use, and they haven't used it since the 1800s. And we found a live shark with a little piece of that spear in it. So that tells us that that shark was swimming around the ocean. 200 years ago, somebody thought, I should try to catch this shark. 
And the shark said, nah, -uh, no way, you can't catch me. And the spear broke off. And a scar grew around the spear. And this shark has been swimming around for 200 years with a spear in its side. Yeah. And that's how we know that they've been around for at least that individual has been here for at least 200 years. But there's no individual shark that we've followed their whole life. We haven't even been doing shark research that long. Like we haven't been doing it for 200 years really. So we'll we'll check back in a few hundred years and we'll find it if we know that sharks can live even longer. But great question. I want to note on behalf of Tamara and I, because we've done lots of broadcasts, lots of programs, you guys are a particularly fantastic audience. You have great questions. You've been really engaged the whole time. We just like love you guys. So thank you all so much for being so involved. All right, we're going to take a few from YouTube and then we'll come back for one more round with all our live groups. Mr. Religious Class, Kane wants to know, what education do you need to be a marine biologist? Ah, that's a great question. There's a lot of different ways to come into marine biology. Most common is to go through a university program. You're going to want to take some science courses in uh, high school. You're going to want to take some solid math so that you can do statistics easily when you get to university. And you're going to want to take some biology. And it depends on what area you want to go into, whether you'll find chemistry or physics more important. One of the really, I think, most interesting things to study is the way that the water moves in our ocean and how that impacts the animals living there. That's my favorite intersection of marine biology and the sciences. Yeah. So cool. 102 different <laughs> paths to being a marine biologist. Yep. And so many different ways. The most important thing that you can do today to prepare to become a marine biologist is to be curious like you are today, to keep asking those questions and to keep coming up with interesting wonders. Because each time you're curious, you look up a new fact and that gives you a solid start. If you check out our education link right below, that's one way you can get some of those questions answered, some of that curiosity peaked. And that's my goal. My goal is that you still have questions at the end of the day, because there's always something new to learn. And that's what our scientists are looking for. If we already know the answer. Great. We'll look in a little further. We need your questions to inspire us to keep learning and to keep exploring. And to keep solving answer. problems. I love it. It's the perfect answer. That's usually when we get at the end of broadcast. So thanks for sneaking that in in the middle. All right, a uh, couple more from YouTube, and then we'll head back to our group at Montevideo Middle School. Um, Lily, or, or we got a bunch of questions from Mr. Shadis class. They're all good. You know what? I really like this one. Emily in grade six wants to know there are different layers in the water, which is a cool thing to know in general. What layers do sharks live in? All of them. Oh, I love this question because remember how we said sharks have a billion different adaptations. Different species of sharks are adapted to live in those different loans, um, zones. So like I said, the changing and the movement of the water is one of the things that I'm very interested in. Um, our epaulette sharks that we saw that can walk, well, we know that they like to live in the shallow waters. And they live in the top, or sorry, they live on the bottom, but where it's very shallow. Nurse sharks. They have a tendency to live at about 20-ish meters. You won't see them shallower than that. So they only hang out kind of below 20 meters. Hammerhead sharks. They, well, there's three different types of hammerhead sharks. The schooling hammerhead sharks, they tend to be at about 50 meters before you start to see that. So different sharks adapted to different areas. Our black tip reef sharks, they tend to be in the top 15 meters of the water. So different animals, even though they have similar adaptations, they use them in different ways. That's a great question. I love it. Seriously, I don't think we've ever had one like that. So thanks, uh, Emily. That was awesome. All right, Montevideo, our first of four with our live groups. Come on back in and take us away. Hey, guys. Uh, Tell me your and ask your question. My name is Vladimir Zaychenko. And uh, what is the rarest shark to find in the ocean? Ooh. No pressure. <laughs> the rarest shark to find in the ocean is one that we haven't discovered yet. Mm. 
But I think one of the recent discoveries is our goblin shark. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna look this up and talk and bring it up as a picture as you talk about it. I would love that. So goblin sharks are one of our deep water sharks. And right now there's this really cool program by NOAA, that's the National Ocean and Atmospheric Association. They're studying basically how our ocean and our atmosphere interact. Uh, they've got this program called the Nautilus Explorer, where they do deep sea dives with an underwater robot that they live stream. So if you're interested in live streams, that's a really cool one to watch. And they're exploring the deep ocean because the deep ocean is where we're finding the most new creatures, our goblin shark. So weird. They're so great. By the way, we've done many live broadcasts from the Nautilus. And so the NOAA Explorer team, we've had them on the broadcast many, many times. If you want to check out some of those programs, we've never had one on Goblin Shark specifically. So maybe we'll have to do that next. But they're so, so freaky. Very yeah, cool. Yeah. So 10 out of 10 recommend tuning in anytime the Nautilus Explorer is on because they are one of my favorite people to follow. Um, and they're just seeing cool things every day. Um, uh, Mr. Lee's class, come on back in. Hey. Hi. Hi. My name is Ivory and I have a question for you. Does any shark blink? Oh. Uh -huh. So, cool question, because you would think they're underwater, they gotta blink. The reason we blink is because there's little particulate matter in the air around us. And that gets stuck on our eyeballs and that makes it hard to see. So we blink. And the liquid on our eyes washes those particles away. Sharks are in the water, swimming around. Their eyeballs are being washed constantly. They don't need to blink to clean them. But imagine you're a shark. How they eat is like this. They take a bite and they shake their head from side to side. Those teeth, not good for chewing, just for ripping. So they rip and then swallow their food. But when they're shaking their head from side to side, their food could poke them in the eyeball. That would be a problem. So what they do is they can roll their eyes really hard. They can roll their eyes so far back that the part that's important to not get scraped or cut doesn't get exposed to the air around them. Great question. I love that nuanced answer. That was awesome. All right, we're heading to Manitoba and then to Florida. Um, very different place. We got a really wide audience today. This is very exciting. Uh, room 12, come on back in. Hey, guys. Hi. Hi. My name is Dominic, and my question is, how good is the shark's eye eyesight, and why do they need, like, seven senses? Uh, yeah. Great question. Good question. So that particulate matter that we mentioned that's sometimes in the air, it's usually small enough we can see through it, but if you've ever been on a foggy day, you can't see very far through the air. The ocean is often like that. There's lots of algae and plankton in a healthy ocean, and you can't see very far. So those other senses help make up for the fact that you can't always see a long distance underwater. Thank you. I mean, a, a way of thinking about it too is we have really good eyesight, but we still have other senses because there are different ways that we navigate the world. So just because you have eyes, it would be unfortunate if you couldn't smell or touch or taste or these other things. Um, but I love that question. You guys are great. This is one of my favorite audiences we've ever had for a broadcast. So pat yourselves in the back. Uh, Ms. Alfonso's class, come on in, wrap us up and uh, go for it. Hey guys. Hi, my name is Asia and, and I have a question that, how long can a shark get? Yeah, how long? So about as long as two school buses is our current biggest shark. So 20 meters long. So you can kind of look from one side of your classroom to the other side of the classroom. And a whale shark, you'd have to squish it a bit to fit in there. <laughs> They're such spectacular animals. Truly one of my very favorite creatures on this planet is the whale shark. Everyone should take the opportunity to look them up a little bit more because they are so, so special. Um, Tamara, this has been such a fun program. Again, such an engaged audience. You guys have been amazing today. I wanna to make sure our classes have the opportunity to keep the learning going. And so ocean.org is Oceanwide's website. It's the best 
program I've seen in the entire planet for ocean education. Specifically, their education page is awesome. I'll make sure all our registered classes have this. And if you want to learn how you can choose sustainable seafood at home or in the grocery store or in restaurants, check out seafood.ocean.org for how to make those informed choices. Uh, certainly here in Canada and increasingly internationally around the world through their platform. Um, Tamara, is there one last message you want to share with us about sharks and how cool they are before we bring in all our classes to say a big thank you and goodbye? My The last thing that I want to say is that I hope that each classroom still has a bunch of questions, a bunch more things they want to learn about our ocean because sharks are an important part of it. And so much else is also important. We're connected to our ocean in more ways than we can imagine. I want us to feel that connection and to think about the things that we can do at home to help it. Sustainable seafood, walking to school, our oceans protect us. We need to help protect our oceans. So thank you so much for your curiosity today. Yep. You guys rock. As you mentioned earlier in the broadcast, there's no better thing that you can do than bring your curiosity to absolutely anything that you're interested in. Uh, and we really appreciate you all joining us today. I'm going to bring in our class and say a big thank you and farewell. So you can use outside voices for like five seconds. How about that? Miss Alfonso's class, Monte Video Middle School, Mr. Lee, welcome and thank you guys so, so much. Thank you. <laughs>